The Spin-Off Podcast Network. Talo for lover. I'm Madeline Chapman, editor at The Spin-Off. If you have the means, consider supporting our high-quality journalism by becoming a Spin-Off member. Sign up now at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. You're listening to Business is Boring, a podcast that reckons it's anything but. Business is Boring is brought to you by Spark Lab, offering inspiration and practical advice to help businesses find their edge. To hear more about Spark Lab, including details about the latest events, workshops, and business tools, visit sparklab.co.nz. And now, here's your host, Simon Pound. You're listening to Business Is Boring, a podcast that reckons it's anything but. Business Is Boring is made by The Spin-Off with help from Callaghan Innovation, New Zealand's innovation agency. Here's your host, Simon Pound. Nearly every morning, thousands of people around New Zealand and the world start their day with a workout led by a mum of four boys from her Christchurch lounge. Lisa Fong gets up and runs a Facebook Live off her iPhone, leading a short, sharp 20-minute workout using just body weight. The accessible workouts and friendly, inclusive approach for only 10 bucks a month with no lock-in have boomed. Now, a worldwide success with her sisters involved, Lisa Fong's Move It Mama is a thriving business with a great community and just the kind of positive realness we could all use a little bit more of. Joining us on the show to talk fitness, the journey, sparkle, lifting people up <laughs> and keeping it real, founder Lisa Fong joins us now by Zoom from Christchurch. Kia ora, thank you so much for being here. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> hey, so tell me how it all started with Move It Mama from um, turning up to school. Was, was it turning up to school in active wear? Um, oh, that <laughs> sounds so funny. No, okay, so um, I... It pretty much honestly started like that. Like, you know, I would just go to school, pick up, and I'd look like I'd done some exercise. And a couple of the mums were just like, oh. And I, I I, would have all my kids. So I had – my big boy had just started school pretty much. And, like, I had three other little ones, like, you know. And they would say, like, have you been to the gym? Like, And, and I was like, no. Like, I wouldn't – that would be too, like, logistical nightmare for me to try and do that. And so I just said, oh, I, um, I, I just exercise at home. Like, I just do a 20-minute workout. I just get the kids all their snacks. I wait for their lunch or something, and then I just do it while they're watching me. And, like, because I was so passionate about the fact that, because I've always been into sport and the gym and that, and then suddenly, like, I was exercising at home and seeing, like, the same kind of results of my brain was feeling refreshed and I was getting the workout in and I was feeling fit and strong that it made me think, like, why bother going to the gym? So I just do it at home. So that's why I, it wasn't just, like, a little bit of lunges. It was actually a proper decent <laughs> workout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I, I would just say, I, I just exercise at home. And they were all of it, like, because a lot of people didn't really know back then, a lot of people really weren't really exercising at home, you know? Like, so if you exercised at home, it would be just going for a run. It wouldn't be, like, actually doing it. Maybe some people had a gym in their home, but not really, it wasn't really common. And so they kind of didn't know what I meant. So I said, you can come over if you want and I'll show you. And these girls weren't, I remember them very clearly because I still see them. These women weren't really sporty or anything. So they kind of just didn't really know what I did. So I said, come over. And I remember the Wednesday morning they came over and they had um, two of them. There was two and they one bought their toddler, little girl, and then one bought her her baby or something. And, And so we stood outside my driveway and I made them bring a mat, like, but you don't have to have a mat. Well, maybe one didn't have a mat. And anyway, and I took them to this workout, and I know that they, like, died. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> and, but they were shocked that they could do something for 20 minutes or whatever, how long, and actually get really sweaty and make them feel the benefits that exercise make you feel. And they could do it with the kids around in that. And so that that day, 
the ne- they were on a high and they were like, can we like set up a private group on Facebook? And you could like, you could like post motivational kind of stuff. And like, I was like, okay. So <laughs> I thought this is cool. Like I, throughout my motherhood career kind of thing, I'd go to play groups and I'd, I've always been into kind of wanting to feel good and, and make others feel good. And I just used to see so many mums like, like totally lose, like lost their sparkle. It, it just made me think you exercise helps you become confident again and and so it was like oh this is kind of setting up this private little group and having two mums in it would be real cool just to help them so I did that and then like I said come around you know in a few days time and we'll do another workout together and so they did that and then like a week later it rained and we had a very small house and we had six of us in the house and it was like 90 squares and it was tiny and it was and we had a garage completely full of crap and um it rained and I said to them I can't there's nowhere for us to work out today but I could do it through that Facebook live thing on that group that we've created and I was like I've never done that before but I think maybe you can watch me and we can just do it together anyway and you can leave your kids in at home and so this because this is three and a half years ago now and so um I did that and then honestly by the next day I had like 200 people in the group because they had told their friends and then like (laughs) like their friends in the school ones and like it just was so funny and I was like oh my gosh and it was quite weird because like people were seen inside my house that I didn't know like I didn't know these people and I was like why is this good and then people would start doing the work and so then I thought okay well I maybe this is every Wednesday I'll do the workout through this forum and then people can other people can do it. And that's how it started. That's that's so cool. And that kind of idea of, um, I mean, it must have been amazing as, I mean, we, we had three under five for a little while and that was bananas, but four under five. And, you know, there's just always something. And even finding that 20 minutes, um, you, you know, is kind of a, a, a an amazing outcome of will and <laughs> well you've got to be happen. organized don't you yeah, and, and yeah. like you've got to you've got to try and put it at the forefront of your day like it's actually more important than um making cookies for like laughing and tea you know it's more important than cleaning up the toys you need to do it and that was always my thing is that like i can do all those things much better and much more positively if i can just get a workout in yeah, and if you can if you can set them up with a packet of raisins and oh, so no, uh, an apple, <laughs> and I used to try and make them like I'd wait till they were hungry or I'd like kind of starve them a little bit and be like because I really wanted twenty minutes. And I mean, at, in the early days, it was mental in the fact that a lot of the times they were at the beginning they were you know annoying me and nagging me and wanting me, but I just persevered with it and I taught them that twenty minutes isn't that long in the grand scheme of things. Mummy will be done. And like my sisters used to send me send me workouts to do. They were living in Sydney at the time, and it was they were like twenty eight minutes. It's like sorry, don't have time for that. I can only do twenty because it was like the perfect time frame that the kids can cope. And like if they had fights or arguments, it was a really good reminder for me to ignore that and let them diffuse it themselves. So it was quite good learning for them as well. Awesome. And when it started, I mean that's amazing that you know overnight there were two hundred people on the the group kind of thing. Um, it didn't start though as a business, did it? Like, so you had this group of two hundred people, um, or, or, or following what you're up to. How did it turn into a business? Um, so, yeah, so I did it. I I just got the biggest thrill of doing this because, like, we were on one income, and I, I, we didn't like we had lots of kids, and we were, you know, trying hard to get ahead, and I was that kind of person that I, I felt so good about doing this like people were writing to me that I didn't know like oh you're just changing my life like you're you're helping me so much thank you I need to pay you and I'm like no 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 it just feels so good doing this because we don't have that money to like for my friends with new babies like you know I couldn't buy a really good gift or I, I didn't have time to cook meals and I thought it was a real cool thing for me to do I'm getting my workout in as well but then I'm sharing it and helping other people at the same time. So I felt so good about it. And it was just so, it was like a dream come true for me. I just felt like, um, it probably sounds a bit ridiculous, but I was really needed. And I love feeling like that. And I, like, I am a teacher, a trained teacher. And so I was, I, my baby had, was about to turn one and it had been going for about six months and it was big now. There were a lot of people in there, but a lot of the time I, 
I didn't know how many were actually using. You can't tell. I mean, I still have no idea how many people work out with me or the twins, my sisters. But um, the group was at about 5,000. And so that was like I, my husband's quite a private person not private, he's just, he, he said, whatever makes you happy, just do it, you know, who cares? But he's not, he doesn't really do social media or anything like that. So he, to get his, like, support that it was fine, I just kept going, which is why, and because I'm very open, that didn't bother me, that there were 5,000 people probably just watching how I tell my kids off for, because I know that a lot of people like to see that too, like how I deal with toilet training while working out, all this kind of thing. So anyway, I was loving it. I just was loving doing it free. I didn't want, I actually, to be perfectly honest, I was really, uh, people said, you need to make this a business. And I was like, oh, no, no. That will just take away the joy of it from me. And so I, but then it was actually, people were actually sending me gifts and like m- emails and letters and cards saying like, we, you can't go back to teaching. Like we, we ha- we're we invested in you now. You're our we see you, you know, you're our friend. You need to, work, you make us feel so good. So I had to think, okay, I need to make this into a business. And I have no idea if it's going to work because I don't really, I know I've got a couple of hundred probably diehards that do the workouts, but I don't really know how to do all the thousands. And so um, I thought the one thing I need to make sure I do is to keep it really cheap because then I can still have the joy from it. And I didn't want to make it like people said, you're underselling yourself and, I, and that, annoyed me because I'm like well if I put the price up if I make it expensive like what people were saying I'd pay so much more than that that's what they always said to me it would stress me out and I'd think that I'd have to do more and make it better and and it would just take away the joy and I wanted to break down the barriers I wanted we were one income I sometimes I couldn't afford a coffee and so like I remember that feeling and I never want to forget that feeling and I know that that's like the case for a lot of families so I had to do a bit of research and a bit of thinking and I just had to make sure I whatever I did, it needed to sit right with me and it had to be sustainable and I had to always feel good about it. So yeah, I um, launched the business about eight months after and everyone kept saying, you need to do it, hurry up, people are going to copy your idea, right, right. and I was like, no, I, I don't feel like that at all. If it works, it works. I feel like it, like I'm trusting my intuition, I... I know that I don't have to do it quickly. If people don't want to do it, then that's fine. And if they do, then that's good. And I knew I had built a lot of trust in a lot of people. Like, I'm very honest and I'm very transparent, probably too much sometimes. Like, I say things that I probably shouldn't say. But but that's how I, I went. The more I open up, the more I get back, I think. The more vulnerable I am with fear and self-doubt and imposter and all that kind of thing, the more support I get back. And... So I launched the business in February the 1st, 2018. So, um, and within the first week, I had a 1,000 people, like, actually subscribe and join up. Wow. And, and that price you landed on, Lisa, was 10 bucks a month, right? And so that's kind of less than that coffee a week kind of price point. And you've got no lock-in, so people can no. kind of stop when they want and the like. Yeah. And And so, I mean, that does seem like really good, like, value for people, but also, like, with... Five, with a thousand people signing up, it probably is quite a nice way to kind of make the, it's quite a nice business straight away, isn't it? That's great. It was quite incredible, the first, and I, I got a seven chart segment, just like, yeah, it was crazy. Because I suddenly got an income overnight, like that day, I suddenly started earning money and I hadn't earned money for a few years, you know, and yeah, it was crazy. Ah. And tell me about that, you just mentioned before that kind of, that vulnerability, I mean, Part of the remarkable thing, and I, I've, I, um, I had a look at the the seven sharp segment you just mentioned there, and you know they they um showed pictures and talked about just rolling straight out of bed and putting your hair in a ponytail and just like chucking the camera on and going for it. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, and, and having people into your lounge and the like, um, yeah, like there must be mornings that you just kind of don't feel like it and you just have to get through it. How do you, which which is the same for ev- lots of business people, but when it's 10 past 6 in the morning and in your lounge, it's probably five times. Like, I actually hate it. How do you sometimes. do it? How do you do it? Yeah. I hate it. <laughs> sometimes I hate it. And sometimes, so, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you, and it's really bad because I feel like I tell you a bit more often than I probably should. But like, people quite like it. Like, so I, I get out of bed and like, and I go to the low and then I just like put my hair in a ponytail and then go out and I, and I, 
And it's really bad because my sisters are not really like that. They're quite, one of them, Charlotte, one, one's quite pregnant at the moment, but they're both quite like, we're different. Like whenever we work out together, I'm like, oh, do we have to? Can't we just have a wine? You know, like, but I know that I need to do it because it will make it so much better. But I'm a bit of a pain. Like they're really quite motivated and, and um, quite positive. And I'm a bit like, the people think that I am positive in my own negative way, I think, because I, I express, oh, I can't be bothered. I've had a crap sleep or the kids were awake and let's just get this done at our own pace kind of thing because, and at the end of the day, and honestly, you when you fit, I'm a completely different person than when you see me log on and then you see me at the end. You can just tell the difference in me so much. Like, I'm so much more positive and I can handle it now, you know? So you just have to, I think it's a really good kind of, um, like, I think it's really good for people to see that, that you not it's not always like yes i'm gonna go and do a burpee 100 you know I, I, like, I don't really fancy it but i know it will ultimately be a game changer in my day yeah and, and about that like that relationship to exercise which seems to be a really big part of kind of why it's so accessible and so many people feel so welcome to be on these workouts with you is is that you do have such a positive attitude to to exercise yeah t- tell me about that role about that kind of just making you feel good Mm. So I feel like it didn't really, um, the penny hadn't dropped for me. Like I worked at a gym and I, throughout when I was at university and stuff. And I, I remember like slaving away on like a cross trainer for half an hour and then a treadmill for 20 minutes. And then I'd do the bike for half an hour, try and get over an hour of cardio. And like, why? What for? Like, what's it going to do, you know? But I remember thinking it was about my body. Like it was completely like, you know, the longer I do cardio, the like slimmer I'll be or something. But there was nothing about, I mean, I knew, we all kind of know that exercise makes us feel good, but we, but I think a lot of people in society use exercise to lose weight. And I think being so um, torn and needed by all my kids and having so many children, I could have really like, like sunk. And I think that it was, it, I remember it dawned on me one day that like, like I, I remember having a really bad day and and thinking, I've done my workout though, like that's something for me, and that's given me this control, and how good am I that I've done that for myself, and I remember using that feeling as each day, you know, I don't exercise every day, but, you know, I try and exercise five times a week, say, and there's a lot, I mean, today I'm not exercising, and I'm like, oh, I've got to exercise tomorrow, you know, I still think that, but I know how good it's going to make me feel, it will set me up for my Friday, and I think being so um, torn with all these kids, made me realize that it's actually nothing to do with what I, my, I look like or my body. It's mentally, it's the strength with my mind. Like it just helps me, you, you do a workout and then everything, like I'll, I'll be a bit more proactive. And, and I needed to be proactive because I had four little kids that needed, I needed to be organized. I needed to have everything, you know, the family running and routines and everything. And that helped with like the sense of control that you can kind of take back. So I think from those days, early days of the kids, that's when I kind of realized that I'm actually exercising to feel good, to just run my run my family life so much more productively and more positively. And I was a better like person when he, my, my man would come home, like I was such a mole in those days where I wasn't exercising. And like, I just was so much more positive because I felt good about myself. And when you feel good about yourself, you think happy thoughts and you can, you know, you just are a better person. Yeah, and that idea of sparkle that you have that kind of captures that. Tell, tell us about how sparkle fits in. As I, I love it. It's really funny because some people are like, oh, my God, what? Like when they first sort of hear about that. I've had a message I remember a long time ago going, you know, I was really sceptical about you and your sparkle thing because I'm probably a bit painful. People probably do not like me because I'm probably a bit positive. But I really understand, this is the, from this member, I really get it now because I've I found my sparkle again and I know exactly what you're talking about. So when I was like, early days mummy, I totally lost my sparkle, like not confident, like I wouldn't be able to talk to you, you know, I just, I, and I, I went from being very confident and able, you know, really talk to anybody and um, then I just sort of got myself into a shell I think because I didn't feel good, I just didn't feel good and I I was just the mummy and that was all I thought I was, you know, And I, but it was ultimately because I wasn't confident, like I lost my confidence, which I think is like your sparkle. 
But it was one day that um, I was at a wedding and I had the third child or maybe the fourth, I can't remember. But I had been exercising and I was confident and I felt like quite good about myself. I think it was after the third because it was kind of when I realized that, oh my God, the sparkle. And I, a man started talking to me. I don't know. I can't even remember who it was. But I remember like chatting away with him thinking, oh, I've got this conversation. Like I can chat with you now. And I thought it, like, oh, you know, a year ago, a year or so ago, I would have been too, I wouldn't have really known what to say to you. I wouldn't have known how to hot handle that conversation or I couldn't back my ideas up or string a sentence together. You know, I could only really talk to mums. And and that's when I thought, right, I've got my sparkle back and I know how I've got that back. It's because I'm confident. Why am I confident? Because I'm exercising. Like, I don't mean that not people that don't exercise are not confident, but for me, confidence comes from within and I felt good about myself and, and it's because I'm active and I'm, I've been exercising regularly yeah Kia ora, Duncan Grieve here managing editor and host of another spin-off podcast you should subscribe to if you haven't already it's called The Fold and it's about one of my all-time favorite topics one I've been reporting on and obsessing over for some years now the chaotic but incredibly exciting and fun New Zealand media industry and scene subscribe now wherever you get your podcasts and join me for in-depth analysis and interviews with some of the most influential and interesting players in New Zealand's media Tell me how the business has grown, because, I mean, it's been quite a, 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 a short couple of years, but a big couple of years for people doing things at home over the internet as well. Yeah, so it's three years, but three years in business, it was in February, we're actually having the party on Saturday night with the go-ahead from Jacinda, which I'm, but um, like it, it's still growing, it grows every day, we have people that leave a, like a lot as well though, and that's cool because often it's, we've, we've had just pretty positive feedback all the time, like it's not you girls, it's just me, or um, you've given me confidence to now go and do like classes outside of my home, thank you for giving me that confidence. Um and with lockdown, it was funny because we were like old hat. I never know how to say this, but old hats, old hands, old hats or old hands. You know, like we were like we'd been there, done that. So everyone was coming to it. People were like, "Do move it, Mama." They've been doing this for ages because when lot everyone said, "Oh, lockdown would be so good for you because everyone will want to go online," but all the gyms went online as well. So that was a little bit like, "Oh, well, it's, you know, that, that's great, but we're not growing that much." But it definitely did grow, and um, and it yeah. So it's still just steady. It's it, we haven't really gone down or anything. So yeah, it's cool. And your sisters in the business too now. Both of them, yes. So um, Jessica is a personal trainer, and she is postpartum and pregnancy trained, and she's currently pregnant with her second. She's thirty six weeks pregnant with her second. So Jess and Char, Charlotte lives in Cambridge, so she just taps in in Cambridge, um, and. She, so what happened there was we've always been very sporty family, like sporty girls and really close um, friends. And we always, we live together a lot and we always, always exercise together as much as we can. And so once I started doing this, I made this closed group. Um, obviously, I started doing more workouts. So I started with three workouts a week. And then when I launched the business, it was six workouts a week and I was doing them all. It was just me. And then it got to the point where I was going to like totally burn out because I don't recommend doing six. There was two beginner workouts in that group, but like it was so hard. And like I, I mean, with all the kids as well. And so often I would just get them to fill in. And it was really funny because I am such an oversharer. I always talked about the twi- like the, my sisters and my family and would put photos of the girls and my brother as well. But um, yeah, and so... They were the group were very the are very, the members are very invested and like wanted to meet my sisters too and so it was really cool they really open they they welcomed the girls with open arms and they're so amazing and I never have never had to ever like say don't say this or do this you know they just are totally they live and breathe the same values as me so it's just been such a no no brainer to like get them on board so now I employ um them both but um Charlotte does work she has her own other job um but she just takes the work she takes three workouts a week and Jess I actually employ 15 hours a week so she does a lot of my stuff now too and she takes um three workouts as well oh, that's so cool and how important have you, you know you mentioned before the seven sharp and you've been um 
you know, won some really great awards through, um, you, you know, some magazine business awards and, and had some really great accolades along the way. How important has it been to your growth and your business to get out there and tell the story and to um, to put yourself out there for those awards and the like and to win them? So I, um, I've never actually put myself really, like, I've, I, my thing, I'm, I'm a bit weird, but so I wouldn't go to people and go like, oh, can I do this or can I be on this? So they've always come to me. So um, Seven Sharp came to me and said, can we do a story on you? And I was like, okay. And then they came back to me and they've done two stories on me. AM show wrote me an email saying, we'd love to have you on the show. And I just think that's such a thrill that because I actually hear about businesses going and trying to get these kind of things. And I love the fact that they've come to me and I haven't pushed for that, Um, which I think is another reason why it just feels so right because I'm not going out there and trying to get it all. It's just obviously I'm doing something right and it's working. It's it's so amazing for the brand to have. And I love being able to do those kind of, even this podcast, I love being able to talk about my story because it's, it seems so natural for me to, to speak about it. So I've never had to worry too much about these stories and interviews and magazine articles and stuff because it's just me and I'm Move It Mama and that what you see is what you get. Um, with the next magazine, like I won the next, what was it, next businesswoman, next magazine businesswoman of the year. And a, a person put, my, put me forward for that. And yeah, so that was pretty amazing to win that. And, but I do think, like, most of our growth comes from word of mouth. So as much as all that is so good and, it, um, you know, it builds up the brand and makes, the, you know, the brand look really good, it, a lot of the growth is from, like, people we know and people who know everybody. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you were recommended to come on the podcast by a person who's in your community and loves what you do. And uh, I put the call out saying, hey, uh, what are some great stories out there? And um, so, yeah, like that's the impact you're having on those those people in your community coming right, cool. right through. And yeah, speaking about that community, like how's it how's that surprised you? I mean, you must have people that have, um, you know, you, that you've been growing with all of this time. And um, you, you're talking before about people sending you gifts and the like. Um, yeah. How has the community kind of surprised you, I guess? Yeah, it has surprised me. And it's so surprising because people always talk about the community and what you've created. And I'm like, so hard for me to like kind of see that. Like it's so, I just do my, like, I, I wish I could see it from an outside person's point of view. But we've we've got this party on um, Saturday night and people come from all around New Zealand. And I actually, the first year party, I had people come from Australia. But that's real cool. It, like, it's still, it's really hard for me because I just don't know what it looks like. Like, it, I just live and breathe it. It's just like. This is just what I do, and I know that it's changed. Like people, I had a message yesterday saying, "Like you've changed my life," and I, but I sometimes don't really believe that I that impact. It's real hard. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, because I, I guess, like you said before, you can't see everyone on the other side of the Facebook mm-hmm. live. Mm-hmm. But people are so nice and forthcoming, and they. I think what from the early days, I always paid a lot of attention to that Facebook. I know, like that. That Facebook Live workout, for instance, I'll always go back and like like all the comments and read them. I would never. People are like, do you just like them and not read them? I'm like, no way. Like I ne- I read everything, and I always reply and I always try and give people time. And I always feel because I've got this big thing about inclusion and like I just as a teacher, it was my number one thing. Like I didn't want anyone to feel left out, and I just have this. That's a passion of mine, and. And I make sure I try and make people feel included, which is why we like introduce different workouts to help other people. Like, you know, we do the big back to basics, we do the pregnancy, we do strength workouts now, we do so much more because, but right from the beginning, I started with the back to basics because I was doing these four high, high intensity workouts and people were like, I can't even do it. There's no way. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. Okay, right. I need to change this. I need to give you something that you can do because everybody can do it. You just have to break it down and regress. And But, but they didn't want to like, feel like they couldn't keep up with me. So back to basics is like, I'm going slow enough for anybody to keep up with me. What would your advice be for people who do have something that they're passionate about and they see is so good uh, and they want to share it? I think if that's if they're passionate about it and they want to share it, then that's the key. They need to be passionate about it. I think you need to be, it's hard. I think my success has been quite open with my struggles and fears and, and really connecting. Connection is such a huge 
part of success, I think. I think people need to be understanding and be empathetic. And so all those kind of factors, you know, you can be passionate about something, but it's how you deliver it with authenticity. And the more passionate about something, the more open and honest of why you're passionate and like actually explaining why will will come back, you know, and, and be it will help build that brand. I think you need to make sure your brand has been built um, like before you try and like, I mean, I never tried went out to make money and I think that was the key thing as well. Like I wasn't just like, right, I'm passionate about that. I'm going to do that and make money. Like I never thought that. And I know that a lot of people do think that. And it's just about money. For me, it was just like I wanted to share something I was so passionate about and it's and it's paid off. Yeah, and that authenticity just totally shines through in, um, in like so many of the comments that people say about why they... They love it as well, yeah, hey. That's cool. Thank yeah. you. And what what will success be for you um, in in this venture? People say to me like, I, you know, I hope you get to do go do the move at Mama Party because then you can really like, you know, see what you've you've done. But I don't know. Like, I don't know if I've succeeded. Like, this is such a hard question because so, I've got no. So we've got like four and a half thousand or four thousand six hundred members in Move at Mama. You, I wouldn't care if it stayed like that forever. Like, as long as I can keep do, helping people, that's success to me. Like, if I start to get really, uh, like, don't enjoy it, and then it's a bit negative, I think that's when I have to think about that I am not. So I do think it, like, I think it is su- it's successful. It's it's changing people's lives. And I need to remember that because sometimes it's quite hard. <laughs> it, it, it's 10 past six when the alarm goes off. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it, I know, and, like, there's been so many, like, times where something's happened, like, I don't know, like, Dan, my husband and I have talked a bit rude to me, or I've talked rude to him, and then everyone's heard it, and I'm like, oh, God, and, like, <laughs> my son, like, top potty trained, and he dropped, he did a poo, and it landed on the floor, or, like, maybe I've even, like, done, like, a fart or something, <laughs> and it's so, it's, there's a lot of, like, sometimes I log off going, oh, why do people even want to watch me? Like, because I just think I'm, like, foul in the morning. Like, I, you know, but, like, I don't know what people say. i got no idea, but clearly it's, obviously, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's magic. Well, th- thank you so much for, for sharing the story. That's uh, founder of Move It Mama, Lisa Fong, uh, and you can find, um, find them online and get involved. Thanks so much for joining us to, to talk today. Thank you so much for having me. I loved it. Uh, kia ora. So, so, so did I. Absolutely. Um, and thank you very much to Tina Tiller for producing. Uh, and thank you all very much for um, having us along and listening. And yeah, thank you for um, the great suggestion uh, for Lisa for the podcast. And if there is someone who, who has a great story that you'd love to hear from on the podcast, please do get in touch and let us know. Uh, on Twitter, maybe is easiest. It's at Simon underscore Pound. Cheers. You've been listening to Business is Boring. Presented by Simon Pound and brought to you by The Spin-Off and Callahan Innovation. From The Spin-Off Podcast Network, that was Business is Boring. Brought to you by Spark Lab. Make sure you're following Business is Boring wherever you get your podcasts. And for more information on Spark Lab, visit sparklab.co.nz. Ready to rediscover the joys of cycling? With over 300 kilometres of cycle paths across Tamaki Makoto, jumping on your bike and going for a ride is such a fun way to discover the city from a different perspective. Cycling is getting more and more popular across Auckland, so now's a great time to join the hype and give cycling a go. Head to at.govt forward slash cycling to find your nearest cycleway today. The Spin-Off Podcast Network.